Hi everybody, this is Luna from Luna ơi. I've been receiving a lot of questions about Vietnam and one of them is about the feminism. So today I want to talk to all of you about feminism and toxic femininity in Vietnam. This is my own perspective, so you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of feminism in Vietnam. There are many historians believe that we had a matriarchy society about 4,000 years ago. We had so many legends about a mother who gave birth to everything. So she she was the one who created the sky, the land, the mountains, trees, animals, and of course, humans. We also had so many female heroes in our history. About 2,000 years ago, we had Hai Ba Chung, the Tu Chung sister. Um, they got the revolution against the China Empire, and then one of them became the queen for three years. Another female hero was Ba Chiu. She came from my hometown. I'm so proud of that. Um, about 1,800 years ago, she was very smart. Zero, she stood up against the Chinese empire. She fought the Chinese army. Matriarchy was very strong in Vietnam thousand years ago. But when we started trading with many other countries, especially when China tried to conquer us for a thousand years, it changed a lot. They brought patriarchy into our society. So nowadays, as you can see, patriarchy is the main system here. Even though there are still a few ethnic minorities in Vietnam still follow the matriarchy society. So nowadays in Vietnam, patriarchy is the main system. But if we look inside of that system, we can see that feminism is still very strong here. For example, look at my family. If you look from the outside, my dad is the one who runs the family, control the family, right? But actually, my mom is the one who holds the power. She controls our finance, she gives the money, she buys things, and she runs everything. And whenever we have a family meeting, like big family meeting, the night before that, my mom and my dad will talk together, and my mom will make sure that what my dad should talk in that family meeting. So means that like my dad will talk in the family meeting openly, but actually all the thoughts, all the ideas belong to my mom. So that's how the feminism is running in a patriarchy society in Vietnam right now. Another example about feminism in Vietnam is small businesses, like uh, family-owned businesses. Mm, near our house, there's a noodle restaurant run by an old couple. The old lady, she cooks the food, she deals with customer, she collects the money, and her husband is just like the waiter of the restaurant, and that's it. Or another really good example is about the landlords and landladies here. Me, an American, rented a lot of houses in Hanoi. Most of the time, we will sign the contract with the landlord, but we will transfer the money to the landlady's bank account. Those are really good evidence to prove to you that even though we are having patriarchy system now, but feminism is very strong here. The women are secretly running the family everywhere in Vietnam. You might be familiar with the term toxic masculinity. If not, American did a really great video explaining about it. The link is at the description. So what about toxic femininity? Have you ever heard of that? Toxic femininity is what women do and say that can hurt ourselves and hurt other women. And it also enhances the patriarchy. Toxic femininity has been always a problem in Vietnam. Just look back at all the evidence that I showed you before. Even though women are running the family, controlling the finance, but they are doing it secretly. Just like my mom, she never let the other family members of my big family know that what my dad are talking about are her ideas. Or the landlady like really rare of them 
there to put their name on the house renting contract, always their husband's name. We are being told that men don't like too smart and too brave women. They just want the woman that they can control, they can protect. If a wife is too smart, it would make her husband feel kind of small. So it's not good for family balance. So usually women now, we are hiding our intelligence. We are hiding our real characteristic to just fit in the family. A few years ago when I just graduated from my university, I wanted to try so many things, difficult things, new things that I found very interesting. But my mom told me to not do that. She wanted me to just find an easy job, like with a lot of free time. I don't need to make a lot of money because that's a responsibility of my future husband. My mom and many other Vietnamese women believe that the most important thing of a woman is her family, is her husband and her kids. So she should sacrifice her own career, sacrifice her dream, her desire to just stay home and try to have a happy family with a rich husband and good kids. I myself talk with many of my friends and it's so sad to know that many of them are now just staying home or doing a really easy job just so they can spend a lot of time with their husband and their kids even though they are very smart. It's so totally okay if you choose it yourself, if you decided to do it. But it's not okay at all when your husband asks you to do it, your parent asks you to do it against your own will. And it's a fact in Vietnam now that if you get married to a rich Vietnamese guy, there's really high chance for them to ask you to just stay home, take care of the husband, of the husband's family and the future kids. Because they are already rich, the husband already made a lot of money. So now they need a woman who has a lot of free time to take care of them, their family and their kids. But don't get me wrong, if you really want to do it, if it's your own decision and you're living with it happily, it's totally okay. Nobody's judging you about that. I'm talking about the women who don't want to do that, but they are being told to do that. Because it would bring them depressed, anxiety, and it's not a good thing. Another issue about toxic femininity in Vietnam is that even women are judging ourselves. Just a few days ago, I talked with one of my cousins. We both love traveling, so sometimes we posted our pictures of our chips on the internet. One of our aunt didn't like that. She saw those pictures and she told my cousin's mother that, Oh my god, look at that. Your daughter is traveling again. Where does she get the money? She said the same thing about my pictures too. Me and my cousin, we were so angry. Like, our traveling is none of her business. Why does she have to care about it? And instead of being happy to see us enjoying our life, she was annoyed by it. We use our own money to travel. We didn't ask for anyone's money to do it. And that's the evidence of toxic femininity between women. My aunt believes that women should just stay home, try to save money. Traveling is just a waste of money. And if you travel a lot, it means that you don't care about your kids, you don't care about your husband, you don't care about your family. What is that? Another story of mine about toxic femininity between women. It happened about two or three months ago. I lost one of my friends. Actually, I was the one who decided to walk out of that relationship. It happened when I decided to quit my job and started my YouTube channel. It sounded like so unstable to my friends because all of them, including me, were told that we should find a stable job and then find a rich husband and take care of the family and that's our whole life. Like I tried to do that for three or four years. But finally I found out that I cannot fit in that. 
I'm not judging them. I just try to talk to them about my decision. And I was seeking for some of their understanding. One of my friends, she started criticizing me, mocking me. And whenever I gave her any advices, she dismissed them. It made me so sad for a long time, but I managed to stay quiet. I didn't want to tell her what I felt because I hope that she didn't really mean it. But about two or three months ago, we talked again and that conversation really made me frustrated. And I decided to tell her that I f- I'm feeling like I'm not being respected by you and I think that is the bad thing and I want to stop our friendship from here now. Toxic femininity is very bad. We should stop it as soon as possible. I know that relationship is very important to all of us but if you find a relationship with a person is toxic, I hope that you can be brave enough to walk out of it, to stay away from it because the longer you stay with it, the more depressed you would feel. But I'm happy to tell you that there's something changing in Vietnam recently. Like just a few years ago, a divorced woman would be just very harshly. It's very hard for her to find a new job, even to start a new life with a new partner. But women are now being more and more brave to stand up, to tell their stories, to fight for what they really deserve. And the other people also stopped judging them and they started understanding them instead. It's a really good sign to see that toxic femininity is being erased in Vietnam now. I know it's still a long way until we can erase 100% the toxic femininity out of our society. But I do think that at least something is changing. Some good thing is happening now and I do hope that one day we can build a really strong feminism society with no toxic femininity. That's my stories, my thoughts about feminism and toxic femininity in Vietnam. I hope that you will have a a closer look, a better understanding about what happened and what is happening now in Vietnam. What about you? How is it in your country? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching everybody. Uh, If you have any question, just comment. See you next week and be sure to subscribe. Bye bye.